Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Sarcasm and Orgasm. I'm your host, Will, and I want to thank you for listening and tuning in. And before we get into it, make sure that you like, subscribe, and comment to the channel. Yes, people, subscribe to the channel. And before we get started, I just want to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this podcast, the Zai Experience. Yes, make sure you go check out her website, the Zai Experience. That is T H E. Z-A-I-E-X-P-E-R-I-E-N-C-E. And when you do do a checkout, make sure you use the code WILL10. Yes, people, the number 10, one, zero. That comes after nine before 11, okay? <laughs> so I would love to welcome my guest. My guest, he is a very good YouTuber. Um, he's a motivational speaker. And I've listened to some of this stuff, and I am motivated just to have him on. So I would love, love to welcome my guest, Brendan. How are you doing, sir? Very good, Will, man. How are you, my friend? Oh, I'm good, man. I just love the energy. It's just so, mm, yes, I love it. <laughs> I know, right? Woo. <laughs> so, Brendan, I know about you, but the people might not. So, why don't you tell them a little bit about you? Of course, man. Dude, I'm just learning from your energy. You're Will the Fresh. You got you to gotta bring that energy. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do. I bring the freshness by saying stuff people don't want to. So, that's the freshness right there. Uh, of course, because you got the other guy who's like Will the Expired. So, that guy is not going to show up with energy. Will but you're fresh, expired. man. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you're, you're fresh, though. So, you got to... <laughs> Well, thank you, Brendan. I appreciate it. I really do. I got you, man. <laughs> so, yeah, small, small quick backstory about me. Well, when I was in college, went to business school, mm -hmm. did these things called case competitions. Think of it like professional sports, but for nerds. That's like the best way okay. to explain this. So, like other guys my age, what do they play? Like football, they play basketball, they play baseball. It's not going to work for me. It's not my cup of tea. I did mm -hmm. presentations competitively. That's why I learned how to speak. But then as I got older, brother, I started coaching a lot of the students in the college, mostly for free, so that they can do better at these competitions. Yeah. So basically what happened was a few years later, I'd coach so many people accidentally that I developed a skill in communication coaching. So I started making YouTube videos on the subject because I realized that all the stuff I was teaching people wasn't available for free. So I just started making YouTube videos and it just turned into something I never thought it would. Okay. Okay. And so now in the midst of doing that, like what type of satisfaction did you get that you were teaching other people to be like, Hey, I can turn this into a business. Like how did that go for you? Yeah, for sure, man. So it didn't really start the business initially because most of the first people I worked with were like our age. Like back then, I think I started when I was 19. So I was coaching mm -hmm. like 19 year olds, 20 year olds. So it was super fulfilling because you would see these people who were super shy and then they would go to these competitions and just blast the other teams. Like it was so awesome to watch. So that was kind of the early moments. But I feel what the vision has shifted into, especially as a business, one, I was able to monetize the, the, the channel through executives. So I built an executive coaching practice because those are the people who want to pay the big bucks for a coach like me, let's say. So mm -hmm. I was able to use their money essentially to help them per, like hold their hand, but also create free videos for all of us to learn from. That's how that's okay. how I made the business work. But satisfaction for me, dude, is like the next Elon Musk. You know, when Elon Musk was 15 years old, nobody helped him with communication. My hope through Master Talk is, is that the next 15 year old can watch my videos for free and become an exceptional speaker wow sounds like a huge nerd fest to me <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah it is bro. <laughs> Hundo, but, i mean i mean but no offense because it's like now nerds are running the world uh, more and more as we know it um and it's still nice to know that you took just like a simple thing and really just mastered it and turned it into a business so with you what has it done for you per se like you helping other people and you turning them into almost like successes what has it done for you? I would say for me, man, it's selfish. It just gives me purpose. You know, what I always tell people is if I didn't have Mastruck, who would I be? 
I'd just mm -hmm. be some some person working a corporate job like most of us. <laughs> Yeah. So I think for and there's nothing wrong with that, by the way. I want to emphasize that, but because we got to feed our families, it's important to have a job. I was I was employed for most of my life too, but I think that what Mass Talk has brought me above all things is a goal. Because what happened was after I finished business school, I kind of lost my sense of purpose, and the reason mm -hmm. I lost my sense of purpose is because the case competition nerd thing that I was doing was coming to an end. It's kind of like, it's hard to explain, Will, but it's kind of like a, like a professional sports athlete. Let's say they're in the NBA, and it's their last year, and they get benched mm -hmm. after. They leave the league. Okay. What do you do after? How do you reinvent yourself? Sure, so I kind of had that moment, but on a much smaller scale. Because obviously when you're in the NBA, there's like tens of thousands of people watching, maybe hundreds of thousands. I mean, it was like, uh, like 15 people. Yeah. All right? watching all this stuff so for me i just said you know i was the king of these case competitions i was like the dictator and my uh -huh. sense of purpose was ending because i was graduating so mass talk became my new muse wow wow so uh, so let me ask you about this now um that you went from basically teens or people our age and then you go to like these old big wig farts like Arts. like <laughs> <laughs> you're funny like, dude I'm, uh, I'm just i'm just picturing it in my mind as i'm asking so when you like transition from old to the well from young to old um and you're you're charging these people like what type of packages are you charging to make them successful because you would think if you're dealing with people who are in uh who are wearing suits they are already stable they know how to communicate so how does that work like where where did you start to where you end ah good question well so you'd be surprised a lot of the older people i mean think about it bro whenever you're watching people on tv sure on media but when you're watching these CEO interviews, just go on YouTube. They're all there. These people suck, man. They're terrible at communication. Mm -hmm. Or even if they're good, they're not exceptional. Because there's always improvement. I'll give you an example, right? Let me put it this way. Let's take Michael Jordan, right? But One of the best. Right. But I'm not going to say the best. We're also going to enter this heated debate that I want to jump into because I don't know sports. So I wouldn't be able to he debate. The best. No right? Problem. Okay, then, then let's, let's take it, right? Whatever. One mm -hmm. of the best of the best. Even if he was one of the best, he had many coaches. Right? Yeah, he wouldn't mm -hmm. have won championships without Phil Jackson. Right? Of course, yeah. So, so that's the point I want to drive. Even the and that also applies not just in the context of sports; it applies in the context of our life too. So, even some mm -hmm. of the most successful executives, they still want coaching. Like I have my own coach, actually, just not for communication for other areas of life, because I want to always level up my game. I always want somebody to call me out of my shit, basically, all the time. So there's kind of two categories. There's some who are super introverted. Let me give you an example. Technology professionals. People in tech who code a lot, you know, coders. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know a couple of like your friends maybe. So a lot of these these kids, they make really good money. Like we're talking 100, 150,000, 200,000 dollars a year in some cases. Like very well, but they're super shy, dude. Super super shy. Like they want to just sit on their computer all day. So they need somebody like me. To help them get the result quickly they can watch the videos but they'll spend years watching these videos so they, they'd rather just spend a few thousand on me to help them with their communication but the question that you asked was how did i transition from young to old so mm -hmm. how i did that was i coached people my own age then i coached people slightly older than me and i just kept leveling up the age little by Got little it. and that's okay. how i built it up yeah so as you were like increasing and increasing your value were your prices like going up and up or did you I stay would, at a certain price? You got it. I stayed at a certain price. So, so every model is different. So I'll, I'll just give you the price because so, I, I know you're curious. So so I charge executives 3000 for a three-month package. That's basically what, dollars I, what I charge. Or like... Yeah, yeah. US. Yeah, US dollars. You got it. Okay. And they have like all access passed to me. If they want me to do some results, they'll do some results for them, whatever the hell they want. Uh, minus maybe that's the 18 plus stuff that, that you've had on weird other episodes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, coaching man, you just gotta add value in any way, shape, or form. Bonus, we'll leave that for another day. I mean, but I think some, there's just some value that you just can't put a price on. <laughs> Dude, you never know, man. You never know. <laughs> anyways, anyways, but, but what's nice about this business is you don't need a lot of people. You know what I mean? Like to make a hundred grand a year, 
That's how I scaled up so quickly. You only need like 30, 35 people. So what does my channel have on YouTube? I forgot, like 10, 20K, whatever. If 30 of them out of that 20,000, whatever, are spending a few thousand dollars because they want access to me, they'll pay. So it's all about it's it's all about understanding who the type of buyer is and giving them more value than everyone else. So for example, let's say you take somebody like me. If, if somebody said Bill Gates would meet you for an hour for a thousand bucks, I would spend a thousand bucks to meet Bill Gates for an hour. And I'm sure a lot of people would. Right? Know, Not everybody. That's like, that's like rent prices to me. I, I don't know if I want to see that man for an hour. So Hundo, I mean, hundo, <laughs> hundo. Fair, 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 fair. But some saying... people would. Some people would. Not everybody. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Some people, Some people would. would. They would ravish at the uh, the availability to be able to meet a man who's revolutionized computer industry. Great. That's fascinating. But for a realist, you know, such as myself, I'm a color. I don't know if I really want to spend an hour with that man because he looks kind of boring. So. Fair enough. Fair enough. I, respect, by the respect. But but I think what I'll say, like, and I agree, is it's not about convincing everybody. Right. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just about convincing a small group of people and just adding more value than what they spend on. Because most of the people spend 3K on me. They're usually executives mm -hmm. making 150. So if I can get yeah, them on their next business. promotion, they'll make way more than three. Man, you sound like a high, and I mean a high class prostitute. No offense, bro. <laughs> you put your money as you want. Dude, I'll take that's... it, bro. I'll take it. <laughs> like, they're to make money 3K. Somewhere. But you're not giving up that ass, so it's like, man, you're really doing it. <laughs> you're funny, dude, man. I mean, yeah, it's a good, it's a funny. good business I, to be in. Yay, it is. I'm in the wrong business. You, you are, know, man. You're like I'm making my ass. Yeah, your mom's calling you in the back. Yeah, they're in the wrong business. Man. I know <laughs> what you're doing. So, with the way your business is going, how you've been able to level up, what's been some level of satisfaction for you that you'd be like, if it wasn't for this, I wouldn't be here? Hundo. I, I would say for me, the biggest thing is freedom. Mm -hmm. Because before I had, I was, I had a well-paying job before this. But I think for me before Will, it was it was a grind. Like I was doing close to six figures at, at IBM, but you're working 70 hours a week, bro. Like you don't get weekends, you don't see your family, you have to do all these technical implementations. It's a lot of work. You're waking up sometimes at 5 a.m. in the morning, your first meeting's at six. Like it's a grind, right? You don't, it's not, nothing's free in life, right? No. So I think for me, what's changed? Yeah, sure, I do all financial, all that stuff's great. But I think the most important thing is I can just do whatever I want with my life. If I want to spend an hour talking to you and having a cool podcast and just shooting the shit, I can do that. If I want to go to Florida and just spend three days there, I can just coach clients in Florida because it's all online. So I think it's really the freedom that I'm super happy with and, and that's given me a lot of happiness and just thinking and building more for Master Talk. Wow, well, like I keep saying, I really want your life. <laughs> I really do. Just because I don't know, I, man. Do you really want to be a high class prostitute? You know what? I mean, I look good, so why not? I mean, it's true. I'll give you that. I'll yeah. give you that. No homo, but I'll give you that. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah no homo. I, <laughs> but I mean, yeah, it's just like being able to have freedom, have the access to do what you want, when you want, and how you want it. Now it's like everybody is so fixated, like they're getting this bag, but the bag that they're getting, they have to go somewhere to get it. Not everybody can just sit on their ass and just be able to key and type and stroke, and then, you know, automatically that check is directly deposit in your account so that's how i mean it um because i have to punch a clock you know for my job because i work in the medical field so i have to go to a hospital or to a private facility to be able to get my bag per se so that's how i mean it it's just like not having your life but then having your way of life to how you're able to provide for yourself so Hundo, man. You know, I think in life, and I love that, by the way. I love the work that you do in the hospital. My best friend's a rapper, and he works at a hospital, too. That's what he does. Wait, wait. Your best friend is a rapper? Yeah, yeah. His name is Shamar Shemji. He's a, he's a big-time rapper in Montreal. So that's, that's how he built his rapping business. So while he was rapping, he was working at a hospital, making bank, and then taking that money and reinvesting in his music. Really, really interesting story. Okay, that's, that's good. That's a nice way to remark it so okay but please go okay. on don't mean to interrupt yeah, yeah. no 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 don't just, you're all good man interrupt me it's fine i i think i think the key is you know we all have choices in life that we got to make because i was working by the hour too before right and i don't think there's anything wrong with that i think it's all about choices i'll give you an easy one okay a lot of people complain about not having any money but they got a fucking iphone like come on right mm -hmm. 
Like me, even me, I still live with my mom. Like I'm on the record. All my CEOs know this. I still live with my mother. We have a used car. We have no credit card debt. I save 80% of my income. 80%. And I live with my sister and my mother and we all make money. Right? So that's a decision that we make. So because I make that decision, we got more money in the bank. But anyone can make that decision. Because a lot of people can listen to this and go, yeah, but what, I don't have a good relationship with my mother. So what? You could hang out with your buddies, sleep with three other roommates. Just people don't want to do it. Right? I don't, I'm not a millionaire, but I got I the freedom because I bought it back. That's I, all. Shoot, bro. I couldn't do it. I mean, I can maybe have one roommate, but having two and they both be women, whether you're related to it or not, that's that's a huge, that's a huge commitment to want to live with two women who their cycles are different, you know, with two different personalities. You know, you go in the bathroom, you try to take a shit, you don't know who's going to walk in. So it's just like... <laughs> so so you have a very different experience with women than I do. So so my women are Indian women, which is different. So they're a lot more chill, very chill. I've lived with them my whole life and I have zero problems. Live, genuinely. Yeah, if we you, did, you, I would tell you. Yeah, you've lived with them your whole life. It's a little yeah. different when you've lived with a woman that you've been involved with and it's just it's different personalities trying to combat into one so i just i couldn't but, do it but let me push on this a little bit it doesn't need to be woman why are we assuming it's woman if, if i if i didn't hang out with my my i would be hanging out with my guy friends and we'd be roommates right like you know what i mean so there's a way to make it work yeah i've done that i live with a man and a woman and the thing about it they were both gay so it's like trying to juggle that i mean if you had a woman <laughs> Who was on her cycle, and then you had a gay man. He was on his cycle too, but one had a dick, the other one had a pussy. So it's like, <laughs> <to drown. laughs> just just go talk to more normal. I mean, not to say they're not normal, but I guess more tamed creatures. Maybe <laughs> room with them. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a great way to put it. Tamed creatures. Yep. <laughs> talk to people at the hospital, man. You might meet some people. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, it was it, it was all the experience. I mean, I enjoyed it. I didn't have any problems with them. Like now, I'm still friends with them. I still check in with them. That's good. So, yeah. But I'm just saying, on the surface, it's like living with two women combatively. Yeah, I don't know if I could do that. I really don't. <laughs> Fair enough. Bro. And I, it's a choice. Like you said, it's a choice to where you want to stay home. That's the thing. That's what's like really like wow. You got more brass than me, bro. 100% bro and and that's the I mean not more brass than you but in the sense of the choice piece because like you we all have a choice in life like for me I gave up a, like a, like because I cut my salary and how have to do master talk I don't make as much money as it used to at IBM but I traded it because the freedom was more valuable so I said okay I'll, I'll 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 not buy a BMW like my other stupid friends are doing I tell them all the time like why are you leveraging yourself you're better off just having 30 40k in the bank in case something bad happens and now you can do whatever you want with your life it's just we all make decisions and most people unfortunately make bad choices very true and it's the decisions we make that brings us to the resolutions that we get late in life because we all have to choose like that fork in the road so um it's nice to know that you you made a decision because you want it better for your life and you got more freedom than you've ever had so that's 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 making a real smart hone adult decision because a lot of people don't do that they don't no 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 even as adults a lot of us act like kids yes <laughs> oh yeah i just want what everyone else does if they're buying a louis bag i'll just buy a louis bag too what what, what are you doing like keep your your two grand do something else with it I man i got no louis bags i barely have a pair of nikes so <laughs> <laughs> and like any type of money that I get, I'm trying to reinvest into like my podcast and then my YouTube page. That's awesome. So I can like have better quality. So that's that's my Louis bag to me. So I love that, brother. I love that you're doing. Yeah, that. yeah. It's just doing a re a reinvestment that I know is going to pay off in the long run. So, um, and they'd be like, "Well, you don't get paid for this." I'm like, "It's not the fact about getting paid. It's just more about the experience, the fun, the conversations that I get to have with people on a daily basis. That, you know, you might have, but you don't know where it could go, or where it could lead. So, but we got way off topic. So back to master. Talk. Oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I ask you this. So. Where did you come up with the name Master Talk? Like, how did you start branding yourself to where now it's renowned, it's known, people know it's out there? Like, where did that start it? Where did that start and how? 
Yeah, you know, I wish I had a fancy answer for you, man. But but it wasn't. Basically, what we did was we made a spreadsheet, like uh, we made a piece of paper, and I had all my buddies just write fifty names. What do you think it should be called? And we went through all two hundred fifty, whatever. Mass Talk was just one of them. My buddy came up with that name, and then I looked up the U.S. trademark office, and it wasn't trademarked. So I was like, "Shit, we got a winner!" And that's how we, and that's how we found it. And the logo, the story behind the logo is funny. I was sitting with one of my with my my friends. He's killing it right now on TikTok. He's like doing paintings for Barcelona FC now. He's, but he was a broke guy like two years ago, and he's killing it. And uh, back when we were both broke. We we're sitting eating a burger, and he was like, "Bro, I think you like need a logo." That's what he said. And I said, I looked at him, and I was like, "Bro, I got 20 subscribers. Who cares?" And he said, "I'll just make you one." And he just made me a logo. And that's how that's that's and that turned out. And I never changed it. That was the Master Talk logo. So I think the lesson to that is just have be surrounded by good people, and good things happen. And the last mm-hmm. piece, man, is you just gotta hustle, 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 okay. hustle, man. My first thousand subscribers. Dude, I begged for those subscribers. I got on my knees, boy. <laughs> I got. I would just went up to fifteen hundred people, and I said, "Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Subscribe to my YouTube channel." And that's how I got my first K in like sixty days or something. Damn, really? I'm having a hard enough time trying to get a hundred. I'm at like eighty-eight right now. So yeah, you gotta hustle. And then bro. it's, I I am trying to hustle, but I think it's coming like to the the. the outsource or trying to get like a sub for sub like you'll get people subscribed the next thing you know is gone i remember and i'll never forget like three weeks ago i was at 38 subscribers 38 this is a true story 38 i got on facebook and i posted a couple groups so i went from 38 to 78 okay that's awesome yes yeah yeah i went to 38 to 78 two days later it dropped back down to 38 Yes, yes. Like, I was so heartbroken. Like, fuck, Aww. I'm doing all this work. And it's just like, oh, whatever. But I still, I'm still learning. I'm still growing by, you know, still trying to get with different content creators who are much bigger than me. So, you being a big fish, hey, you can help your other brown man out. You really can. <laughs> <laughs> You're so funny, dude. Yeah, man. I mean, like, let me, let me tell you the story because I think it's important. Because for me, it was, it wasn't just groups, bro. It was like literally people one-on-one. But the other piece that I'll admit, I did have a big network when I started Mass Talk. But that wasn't give it. Because my parents were factory workers. I earned that fucking network. So when I went to business school, I just helped a lot of people for free. Because remember the backstory, my coaching back then was free. right? I was just yeah. helping people. So when I started Mass Talk, I had a really clear mission, brother. So whenever I was mm-hmm. sharing people, I, it wasn't like... Hey, could you please subscribe? It's like, yo, John, like, I need you to do this. I coached you for two fucking years for free. Like, help me and share it with your buddies. That's why I had a huge raving fan base from the get. Because they all just said, yeah, like, this guy has a clear mission behind his content and why he's doing it. So I had a bunch of people who were sharing my shitty videos because they were shitty back then with everyone else because the content was good. So Mm -hmm. I got to a thousand subscribers super quickly because of that. So you need to... Not just communicate, hey, bro, can you sub for sub? But more, and I know you don't do that, but more than that, it's like, this is the mission behind sarcasms and orgasms, why I'm doing this. And when you get people excited about that, they'll support you, man. Got it. Okay. I take. I would take that information. I'll use it. Because it's always good to talk with someone and, like, really get, like, how they... How they get from almost the beginning to the end to where you are now to now you're just super huge. So it's like, yeah, bro. I I mean, let's let's have let's let's have it because I think it'll help people. Think about this conversation right now. I don't mm-hmm. need to be on podcasts anymore. Why are we no. having like an hour podcast? Yeah, because that's... it's Im- right because it's important for me. Even at this stage, dude, it's gonna be the same when I'm at two fifty. It's literally like this is the magic. It's mm-hmm. this one-on-one conversation. Because back then, I would just go on any show, right? And even today, I still say yes to most of them. Why? Because it's the human that matters more. Because when you do this, you're building real rapport with real people. So now when I leave, you're going to say, oh, shit, like this guy knows how to shoot the shit. He's not just some professional suit on a, on a YouTube channel. But when you do thousands of these shows, if you're willing to grind, you have thousands of supporters in every part of the world. Dude, you got a huge fan base. That's how you build real fans when you do this, not just mm-hmm. by sending messages. So I think that's the key. It's distribution. And see, I agree, but then I also disagree. And I just Please. this because 
Um, so like with my my setup and my platform, sarcasm orgasm, it's like a comedy almost improv. So I just don't want to get on every every podcast because Fair. it's almost like I don't want to oversaturate or desaturate my own market because I don't have appeal to just everybody. Like, yes, like I said, we all got sarcastic moments. Everybody does. It doesn't matter what type of um whatever that your category that you might be in but still there's like certain there's certain categories that i try to tailor to to where i can get as many as possible so i just don't want to jump on everything like Lil wayne used to do back in the day so <laughs> and and that's fair by the way i respect that my mm -hmm. my and it's funny you called me a high class prostitute like dude i'll whore myself out and i'll tell you why I'll tell you why because i'm always straight i don't think i've shared like with this <laughs> podcast it, it's because look at the end of the day i'm trying to reach the world i want to help every human being if, if whoring myself out will mean that 15 year old julia will have access to my free communication tools dude i'll do that every fucking day of the week okay. right because the reason mm -hmm. but, it, but it all depends on your mission because for me the reason i got i guess woke early in life let's use that word is because of Lewis Howes. And the only reason I knew who that guy was was because he was famous. Because that guy's millions of subscribers on his YouTube channel. So if I never, if he was never kind of, if he never, he was never made, I never would have, I never would have found out about him. And I never would have got the information that I needed to be successful in my life. So yeah, dude, I'll whore myself out any day of the week if it means it'll help the next girl who can't afford a coach. Hey, I mean, that's fine as long as your ass don't hurt afterwards. So. There you go. <laughs> that's the key, bro. Teach their own. Like, I don't judge. Yeah. I think it's more like you just got to do the strategy. Yep. Just loop that shit up and just be ready to go. So, <laughs> <laughs> Man, this is the funnest conversation I've had all week. Hey, bro. I just, I'm, I'm a unique one. So I just try to bring it on as best as I can. So, <laughs> I love it, man. So, um... And I, I always like to ask this. So when I reached out to you and I said, hey, let's do it. And I don't know if you checked me out. What was it about my show that you just wanted to come on and shoot the shit? For sure, man. I'll, I'll tell it to you. For me, it's all about communication. That's why I want to be different than other people in my industry. I like what Gary Vee has done with this brand, where he's not afraid to go on shows that aren't exactly aligned to his expertise. And what I don't mm -hmm. like about suits in my industry is they stay in their box. They go like, I'm only going to do a business podcast. I'm only going to do this if it leads to clients. I'm only going to do... I hate that approach. Because for me, there's always something I can learn from other people. Mm -hmm. There's always something I can get. So I always like to say yes to shows, even if they're outside of my comfort zone, because it pushes me to be a better communicator. So I just like the challenge, honestly, and different. Because obviously the conversations I've had this week, or don't don't even sound remotely close to the one we're having now and i like that and i like that <laughs> kind of challenge so have you been able to like to check out some of the the podcasts or even the episodes that i've done between youtube and also on my uh, podcast pages i did yeah for a few minutes i do it for like two three minutes i don't listen to the full episode but i scroll through the the history mm -hmm. and, and then i go through like two three minutes of like a few episodes yeah Okay, there's nothing wrong with getting snippets. That way yeah, you like, know yeah. what you're getting into. So it's, oh, yeah, fine. yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually nothing, Will, this, in, in the sense of you're going really easy on me. I've been on shows, dude, like it was literally like a gotcha kind of podcast. Where like, mm. Which is not your style, I know. Where it's literally like they have you on and they, oh my God, like they put me through hell. And I was like, fuck, I got to vet who I go on. Cause they actually like tried to get me, which is like weird. No, I don't. I, that is not my style. I just want like just I having know. a conversation with you. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. we're sitting and just having normal conversation yeah, yeah, yeah. as if we're at the bar or something. So, um, I did do one like that. I really did. Like a uh, person, they saw me. I promoted in some Facebook group. It was like, yeah, Will, we want you to come on okay fine i went through the little category interview all that bullshit it was like 50 questions which was stupid as fuck but yeah i swear those 50 questions if i can find the thing i would post it and show it but i just i can't i think i deleted it mm -hmm. but i went on the show and i'm not going to call them out because 
I don't do that. Just know that I went on there. They got an attitude with me because I didn't answer all the questions honestly. I said, well, I'm sarcastic, so I'm a given answer. Like, you can get a sarcastic answer or you can get a real answer. You didn't ask for that. You just said, please fill out. That's what was highlighted. And I went through your stupid 50 questions as if this was, like, fucking stupid. And then after we did it, because it was like an hour, we did it. We did like a post show and the guy was like trying to take like tear one a new one in my ass i'm like look i didn't want to come on this show but i'm just doing it for the publicity so if you don't like it you can kiss my natural black ass two times <laughs> the left and the right okay right in the groove and if you don't like it you kiss in the ass just put your cheeks all the way up in there i don't <laughs> give a damn so it's just like I've been on. I will. I would never go on a show ever like that again because I felt like I got out of my comfort zone and out of my own character, and it made me feel some type of way. It's like people try to set you up, even though they know what the play is, but they don't want to tell you because they just want to embarrass you. And I wasn't for it because I'm not the one. Like I'm way too smart to know what's going to happen before it happens. So. I, I played dumb. I, I did the little, you know, the little house nigga thing. Like, yes, a boss. I'll do it for you. Yes, I'll do it. But no, 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 uh, you ain't gonna try to play me. Uh, uh-uh. no. So I, I understand what you're saying. I do. Oh, you're so funny, dude. And, and I love that story. But yeah, I've been on some weird ones. I remember this one show I was on. It, and I will call them out because it wasn't a bad thing. It wasn't like a gotcha. It was like a fun one, so people can watch uh-huh. it. It's called Weirdos.tv. So I get on the Skype call and I see nothing and I just see a dude's face. Like not his whole body. Like literally just his face and like the corner of the screen. And then there's like beat like pumpkins, like spooky stuff that starts of Dude, I can't even make this shit up. I'll send you the link after. And then after he goes, I want you to write a poem. And I was like, what? And he's like, yeah, I, w- I want you to write a poem. So I just said, cause, cause I'm like all, I just say fuck it, I just do it. So I just made some shit up, and he's like, whoa, that was the best poem. And he started asking me questions about poetry, and I was like, dude, like, what does that have anything to do with me? And then after that, there started like playing like weird sound drums, and then he went into this weird segment, and then he started multiplying my body once again, weird shit, multiplying my body multiple times on the screen. So you saw like 50 versions of me on the screen, and then mentally I was freaking. I was like, what the fuck is going on? But yeah, man, I went through it. It was hilarious. Okay. <laughs> um, well, for sharing stories, like I told you. Uh, so, to my listeners out there, whether you're watching or listening, um, I'm not going to say her name because I will respect her. But I did have an interview of maybe about two months back. It was like two months back. Yeah, it was like before my birthday. So, it was like end of April, beginning of May. I always do pre-shows, everybody. So like I did with Brendan, we have a nice interview beforehand. We talk and we figure out what we're going to do, what we're going to say. So I did it with her. She was fine. She was a normal human being. And I want to put that in quotations, normal human being. Okay. She was telling me that she was a sex worker, which is fine. Get your money, boo-boo. Just like Brendan, he hoards himself out. So (laughs) she doesn't (laughs) own <laughs> but yeah, she does it over the phone. So I'm like, okay. So we start getting to the conversation. We do normal the intro, start talking about her and I, all that. Okay. And next thing I know, she starts telling me weird ass sex stories about she encounters over the phone. Next thing I know, she starts moaning the whole time. Now, this is the type of moaning to where you think you're really doing a good job on her, but you're really not. She's just going through the motions so you just stop and get off of her. Then that way she can roll her ass over and go to sleep. Yes, that was the visual that I was getting in my head. (laughs) It really was. But the interview was so bad. And I mean so bad. Like I could not edit it. I could not splice it up to where I can take the moans out and still have a conversation. Like she was doing it so many times, it made me irritated. Like I was getting turned off and I'm usually turned on by a beautiful woman. And she was a beautiful woman. Don't get me wrong, but just her whole attitude was just like, yeah, I'm going straight numb, bro. Like there's no wood at all, just none. 
<laughs> My like, goodness. This, this interview was terrible. It is the worst interview I've had to date. And I've only been doing this, what, seven, eight months? So I was out about the 20 interviews I've done. This was the worst to date. And as I was telling Brendan, she hits me up every once in a while asking me when I am I going to release the interview. I'm like, I just can't do it. Now, I'm sort of a nice person where I want to give you a letdown, but I can't because it's just it's not in me. So I just I just do the easy route. I ghost her. I don't respond back. So, <laughs> you know, I just thought of something about you. You're a really nice guy. I would say there's actually a solution to this. You should post an unlisted video on YouTube on a different channel that has nothing to do with your your YouTube and just send it to her and be like, hey, it's released. <laughs> That's it. That's it, bro. And then she'll leave you alone. She don't yeah. know, bro. She don't know this fucking industry. She'll just go like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, true. You know what? That is a good idea. I'll, I'll check into that. <laughs> I don't know why it just took me so long to figure that out. Wow. Okay. Okay. Well, you heard it here, folks. Uh, if you want to check out that video, make sure you uh, you you send me send me a DM and you can get it too for five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> just what was your yeah. PayPal address again? I got an email. You know, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we'll talk about that after the show. <laughs> Oh, but definitely funny. wow this is this has been great i've enjoyed this i have so now brendan if anybody wants to get a hold of you you know you help them succeed in communications and you know getting the booty and all that how can they get a, re- a hold of you <laughs> for, first of all let me say this well if for some reason you want to contact me uh don't because the contact is probably not because <laughs> if you're still listening to this you still want to contact me I probably don't want to hear from you, but because it's probably for something else, not what I sell. <laughs> since, since I've been called a, a high class prostitute on the show, so it's probably a bit different. But I like how you show the names after <laughs> you're like, yeah, but people are going to reach out to. Mm-hmm. I, I yeah. would say uh, don't reach out to me, but if you want to watch my videos, uh, you can go on YouTube and just type Master Talk and you'll have access to that. But just please don't contact me whatsoever, anyone from the show. <laughs> <laughs> too funny <laughs> oh this is great I don't, I don't know why i don't know why you would do that to yourself i'm just trying to help you get more people <laughs> you know i'm just trying to get a commission here All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> this is super fun man thanks so much for having yeah. me i really enjoyed this Oh, man, no problem. I thank you so much for coming on, you know, talking some shit with me. Oh, so before I go, we'll do a nice outro segment. So what is something that is going on with you or in your world that you will say forgive it or fuck it? Dude, I honestly think this is always going to be the same answer. Fuck anyone who complains, man. I just hate people complain about life. Even in, like, the smallest way. And I guess the forgive side is, look, I know there's some situations that are tough in life. But if you do it consistently all the time, I don't think you practice gratitude enough. Because our life is so good. Like, just the fact that people are listening to this. They have a computer. They have internet. 10% of the human population, well, doesn't have clean water. Like, what are you complaining about? You know what I mean? So, yeah, that's that's what, uh, that, that pisses me off a lot. Okay, that's facts. That I, you know what? I can't disagree with that. That is facts because, like they say, complaining is draining. So, oh, I love that man. That's a good yeah. quote. Yeah, I, I saw that on bumper sticker in the bathroom the other day. So, <laughs> <laughs> I like it, man. That's that's good. I've never heard that before, actually. Yeah, yeah, is yeah. Like yeah it. it is. It is. You just think about it. Like if you complain, 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 then you start getting a headache. Like you start thinking, like, why am I feeling so bad? Well, bitch, you keep complaining so much that your brain is saying, "Stop, bitch, stop." <laughs> uh. But thank you so much, Brendan. I appreciate it so much for you coming on and you talking shot with me and you just telling us a little bit more about your uh, business practices. Likewise, man. Thanks for having me. This is fun. 
No problem, no problem. Remember, people, if you want to reach out to Brendan, just go ahead and type in Master Talk on YouTube. It comes up instantly. I seen it. You'll see his beautiful brown Indian face. I mean, the man is just gorgeous. Like he's he's got hair that I want to get, but you know, my shit got nice yeah, pressing curls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But remember, folks, remember, make sure you go ahead, you check them out. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel, you like, and comment. Comment and let us know what you think. Um, also, this podcast was sponsored by the Zai Experience. So go ahead and check her out. Use the code WILL10. That is W-I-L-L-1-0. So remember, this has been another episode of Sarcasm and Orgasm. I'm joined by my host. Well, by my guest, because I'm the host. He is the guest. <laughs> I enjoy about my guest, Brendan, from Master Talks. So remember, folks, keep it sarcastic, and I'll talk to you soon.